Hey everyone, welcome back to our channel. If you're new here, please subscribe. I'd really love that. If you're returning, how you doing? So I was sent this article by a community member and the link will be in the description box below. And I was hesitant on making this video because it's just not something that you just want to hear, you know, but apparently this is true. But I had just have the question. Is there really human hair in our bread? Yes, there is, but apparently there's a way to avoid eating it. Bread is a staple food in many cultures around the world and has been for centuries. It's such a common food that many of us don't even think twice about eating it. As an Italian, we eat Italian bread all the time. Heck, I make it. And recently there have been rumors circulating that commercial bread products contain human hair as a preservative. Okay, stop right there. <laughs> as a preservative, I thought, okay, it was an oopsie poopsie. Someone wasn't wearing their hair net and it fell in. But now they're saying it's a preservative. <laughs> oh my God. So while this may sound strange, strange, that's not the word. No, that's not the word I would have used. It's actually true that commercially produced bread can contain human hair or more specifically an amino acid called L-cysteine and that's C-Y-S-T-E-I-N-E -E, that is derived from human hair. Good God. So why is human hair being added to bread? Well, you just said it was for pres preservation, so I'll go on. It all comes down to the fact that commercial bread products need to have a longer shelf life. Just put it in a fridge. It'll last longer. l is a common additive used to extend the life of foods, and it is most commonly synthesized from human hair. The hair is dissolved into acid. Okay, where are they getting this human hair at to dissolve it in order to get this l at? I don't even want to know. It's dissolved in acid and it is isolated and then shipped off to commercial bread producers. Never again am I buying store-bought bread. It's important to note that this practice is quite common and is actually regulated by the FDA. Of course it is. Why wouldn't it be? Because they're putting crickets in our food now too. So still the idea that human hair is being added to our food can be quite unsettling. It's important to remember that this L-cysteine is just an amino acid. Oh, no, it's not. It's human hair. And it is no different from any other ingredient added to processed foods. Oh, it's different, all right. The FDA requires that the hair used is free from contaminants and is treated to meet safety standards. Okay, who here just picks up their hair and goes, mm, it really tastes good. Get the hell out of here. I mean, my hair, it smells good, but that's because of the shampoo that I use. But furthermore, the amount of L-cysteine that is added to bread is quite low. I don't care. There's still hair in my food. You know, if you go to a restaurant and you notice that there's hair in your food, you send it back. You say, give me a refund. I'm out of here. Okay. What's the difference here? Please tell me because I'd really like to know. So... <clears throat> They say that it's not something to worry about if you're worried about the health implications. Oh, I'm worried. Do you know how many people have lice? Okay, do they take that into consideration? I mean, okay, so now they're saying how to avoid eating bread with human hair additives. It's called not buying it. Okay, if you're concerned about what's in your food, the best way to ensure that you know exactly what's in it is to buy your bread from a local bakery. Oh, no, no, no. I'm going to make my own bread. Thank you very much. And I'm going to continue to make my own bread. Thank you very much. Because how the hell do I know they're not putting preservatives in their bread? Okay. Yeah. These bakeries are not likely <clears throat> to use L-cysteine as it's not an additive used in flour. Remember, human hair is added to bread as a preservative, meaning it's most likely to be found in commercially produced bread that you find on store shelves. Okay, so moral of the story is stop buying bread from the store. Okay, because that's just, that's a big no for me now. 
So real quick, I did a search on what foods contain this amino acid. And it's a semi-essential amino acid. It's abundant in many foods like beef liver, crab cakes, lima beans, and some mushrooms. It's also a component of many dietary supplements preparations. Oh, God. And listen to this. Your body makes cysteine from methionine. It's an essential amino acid. It is found in most high-protein foods, including ricotta, cottage cheese, yogurt, pork, sausage meat, chicken, turkey, duck, lunch meats, wheat germ, granola, and oat flakes. Huh. Interesting. Very interesting. And here's something else. It's a non-essential amino acid, which means that the body is able to synthesize it on its own. It can be found in a variety of foods, including chicken, turkey, pork, and broccoli. Just absurd. And then I found this. You know, I could have gone the rest of my life without knowing this. Let's see. It has been reported that most of the hair used to make this comes from China, where it's gathered from barber shops and hair salons. Everything comes from China. Everything. Jeez. And here's something. Um, arsenic has been known to show up in everything from rice to cereal to juice. Why am I? Wow. I know about this one. If you uh, uh, eat vanilla, strawberry, or raspberry ice cream, beaver, anal, and urine secretions. That's just yummy. <laughs> Did you know that yellow number five, also known as tartrazine, is actually coal tar? Me neither. Wow. Chicken nuggets, right? They're only about 50% actual chicken. The rest, there's a chemical used in it that's also can be found in silly putty and breast implants. What the heck? Okay, if you've ever eaten anything that has the red number four dye in it, it's boiled beetle shells. Good God. Rodent hair has been found in chocolate, cinnamon, and peanut butter. Borax has what it has been found in caviar and various Asian noodle and rice dishes because it adds a firm rubbery texture to food. Borax really good lord. All right, I'll leave that link in the description box below, too. Wow. The things you find out when you do research. You know what I'm saying? All right, guys, I'm out of here. I'll see you in the next one. You stay safe. You stay positive. You keep prepping. And as always, fear less and watch what you eat. No kidding. Ciao.